السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اليوم المحاضرة الثانية عن الميتابوليك ريسبونس تو انجري للمرحلة الثالثة الكورس الأول جراحة كلية الطب جامعة بابل Learning objectives for this lecture is uh, the continuations of the uh, first lecture and it is uh, uh, integrated between each other so I cannot uh, um, separate lecture one and lecture two so these are the learning objective for two lectures. Um, regarding the alterations in skeletal muscle protein metabolism under normal circumstances synthesis equal breakdown and muscle bulk remain constant so there is uh, synthesis and at the same time breakdown so the muscle um, remain constant during the catabolic phase of the stress response muscle wasting occur as a result of an increased muscle protein degradation coupled with a decrease in muscle protein synthesis. That's why loss of weight. The major site of protein loss is peripheral skeletal muscle. Although nitrogen lo losses also occur in the respiratory muscles, it will uh, to hypoventilation and chest infection, and in the gut, reducing gut motility so the main site of protein uh, uh, catabolism who will peripheral skeletal muscles but may involve the respiratory muscles and here be consequence coolish the hypoventilation and chest infection and also the muscle uh, the proteins in the gut and he will the gut motility Under extreme conditions of catabolism, example major sepsis, urinary nitrogen losses can reach to 14 to 20 gram per day. اللي هو هذا عادة تقريبا 500 gram of skeletal muscle per day. يعني نص كيلو يفقد الإنسان from skeletal muscle weight per day. Clinically, a patient with skeletal muscle wasting will experience asthenia, uh, increased fatigue, reduced functional ability, decreased quality of life, and increased risk of mobility and mortality. So, uh, in severe trauma patients, in catabolisms, if uh, continue for a long time will end with um, a high increased risk of morbidity and mortality. Alterations in hepatic protein metabolism. Let us talk uh, first with the physiology. The liver and skeletal muscle together account for more than 50% of daily body protein turnover, liver with skeletal muscle. 50% من total body protein turnover. Skeletal muscle has a large mass. تعرف muscle بال body كله أكيد large mass, but a low turnover rate, one to two percent per day. يعني turnover كلش بطيء معناته. Whereas the liver has a relatively small mass, اللي هو وزنه تقريبا واحد ونص كيلو. But a much higher protein turnover rate. In the USA, it's about 10 to 20 percent per day. The hepatic protein synthesis is divided roughly 50 to 50 between the renewal of the structural protein and synthesis of exporter protein. Okay, so any hepatic protein synthesis divided 50% renewal of structural proteins. And 50% the synthesis of export proteins. Albumin is the major export protein. واضحة اللي هو يصدره 
يعني عندنا 50% رينيوال اوف ستراكشر بروتين اللي هو الهور بروتين داخل الليفر و 50% يطلع اليومن لخارج الليفر فانت الالبومين از ذا مين از ميجر اكسبورت بروتين برودوس باي ذا ليفر اند از رينيود ات ريت اوف اباوت 10% بير داي واضحه ذا ترانس كابيلاري اسكيب رايت يعني احنا عندنا الفات البروتينز وخاصه الالبومين فات بالكابيلاري فترانس كابيلاري اسكيب يفلت من ال يطلع من الكابيلاري اسكيب رايت اوف البومين از اباوت 10 تايمز ذا ريت اوف سينثيسيز اند شورت تيرم تشينجز ان البومين كونسنتريشن ار موست بروبابلي ديو تو انكريز فاسكولار بيرميابيلتي فالترانس كابيلاري اسكيب رايت اوف البومين is 10 times the rate of synthesis 10 أضعاف the rate of synthesis وهذا يزداد شو كت ويا increase capillary permeability كل ما زادت ال capillary permeability كل ما صار escape of the albumin from the capillary يعني يطلع من الخلي من ال البصل من البلد يروح لوين بال extra cellular tissue بال extra cellular tissue من داخل ال ال capillary فهذا راح يقلل البروتين الموجود عندنا بالانجري ان ريسبونس تو انفلاماتري كونديشنز انكلودينج مثلا سيرجري بالتروما بالسبسيس بالكانسر الاوتو اميون كونديشنز يعني بالميتابوليك ريسبونس تو انجري او تروما سيركوليتينج سيركوليتينج بيرفرال بلاد مونو نيوكليير سيلز سكريت رينج اوف برو انفلاماتري سايتوكاين زي اللي انتم لوكين 106 تو مونو بروسيس فاكتور الفا ذيس سايتوكاينز Uh, in particular, you can see interleukin-6 promote the hepatic synthesis of positive acute phase protein. Yani, then the cytokines it have the liver. We have acute phase proteins, which are most commonly fibrinogen, which is needed for clotting. One has a disease, a disease, so they blood loss or they have an injury, so they need fibrinogen to make it clotting. And C reactive protein. So, in acute phase protein, the one that protects the cytokines, particularly interleukin-6, protects the liver on how to make acute phase proteins, which are fibrinogen and C reactive protein. The acute phase protein response represents a double-edged sword. That is, it is a weapon and two sides. Why? For surgical patients, as to provide Protein important for recovery and repair. يعني هو السلاح شو ذو حد السلاح مرات يفيد ومرات يضر. اللي يفيد إنه ده يصنع protein important for recovery and repair. But at the same time, at the expense of valuable lean tissue and energy reserves. At the same time, يعني ده نفقد إحنا من ال ال muscle و energy reserve اللي موجودة بالبدي مالتنا. يعني ده يحطهم بروتين يحطهم لايبوليسز على مود نفس الوقت زين ده يحافظ على الطاقة مالت البيشن بس ده نفقد احنا فد فاليوبل تشو اند ريزيرف ريجاردينج ذا تشينجز ذات مايت اوكير ان بادي كومبوزيشن فولوينج انجري وي ويل توك ناو اباوت The changes in the body composition following injury. Let us return to um, basic, which is biochemistry. Here, the uh, chemical body composition of uh, a normal 70 kg male. You can see the fat. Uh, compose about uh, 13 kilogram. This is the fat free mass. This is all of these are fat free mass. Lean body mass. Lean body mass. So the body 70 kg composed of fat and Fat-free mass, or 
sometimes semi fat lean and and lean body mass the fat 13 kilo the other consistent to come at 57 kg uh, 12 kilo who are protein the water he can تقريبا 42 جرام ينقسم الى قسمين اللي هو 28 الانترا سيلولار و14 هو الاكسترا سيلولار والاقل شيء هو المينرالز تقريبا 3 كيلو جرام 3 كيلو جرام اكثر شيء موجوده تكون بالبون سكيليتون this is the normal composition of normal 70 kg male The fat mass can be reduced without major detriment to the function. So the fat mass اللي شفناها قبل شوي اللي هي 13 كيلو can be reduced without major detrimental effect to the body. But the loss of protein mass result not only in skeletal muscle wasting but also depletion of the visceral protein status. يعني احنا البروتين ما موجود بس في السكليت المصل موجود ايضا بالفيزرال بالليفر بالسمول باول باللارج باول بالكيدنيز بالهارت ايفري وير موجود البروتين وذن لين تشو شوف هاي المهمه كلش وذن لين تشو اللي هو لين بادي ماس اللي قلنا عليه قبل شوي احنا قلنا فات واكو لين بادي ماس وذن لين تشو ايتش جرام of nitrogen is contained within 6.25 gram of protein which is contained in approximately 36 gram of wet weight tissue thus if there is a loss of 1 gram of nitrogen in the urine in catabolism we said the loss of the protein or in normal we said the loss of protein in the urea and ammonia in the urine the loss of 1 gram of nitrogen in the urine is equivalent to the breakdown of 36 gram of wet weight lean tissue. So during starvation, urinary loss of nitrogen is rapidly attenuated. يعني لذلك احنا عندنا لما بال بدنا نفقد هاي الكمية الكبيرة من البروتين بالستارفيشن الجسم يقوم يدافع عن نفسه فشو يسوي؟ يسوي سيريز اوف ادابتيف تشينجز فديورينج ستارفيشن ذير از ان ادابتيف تشينجز على مود يقل النيتروجين لوس على مود حتى ما يقل البروتين الموجود بالبادي لذلك المريض او سوري اللي يبقى ستارفد يبقى عايش لمده 50 الى 60 يوم Following major injury and particularly in the presence of ongoing septic complication. And if there is a major surgery, we have major surgery, especially if there is a sepsis, and source of infection, or sepsis, septic shock. This adaptive changes fails to occur. To occur. What are adaptive changes? These are the ones we talked about in the previous slide. انه uh, attenuations of nitrogen loss يعني ما يق... ي... بدي يقوم يحافظ على النيتروجين ما يفقده يقلل نسبة النيتروجين لوس هنا بالنسبة بالنسبة للحالة إذا كان major surgery with sepsis هاي ال adaptive changes fails to occur and there is a state of auto cannibalism اللي هو eating oneself يعني شنو auto cannibalism eating oneself يعني يقوم يأكل بنفسه المريض يقوم يأكل بنفسه resulting on continuing urinary nitrogen losses اللي هو تقريبا 10 to 20 gram nitrogen per day and equivalent to 500 gram of wet weight lean tissue per day يعني تقريبا يفقد يوميا نص كيلو من ال wet weight lean tissue اللي هو lean body mass اللي قلنا عليها قبل شوية as with total starvation مثل ال starvation اللي قلنا عليه يعيش لمدة خمسين إلى ستين يوم بنهنا بدنا جزء أسرع يصير 
اقلل التايم مالته لان ماكو ادابتيشن وانس لوس اوف بادي بروتين ماس هاز ريشت 30 تو 40% اوف ذا توتال ذا سرفايفل از انلايكلي سو عندنا احنا قلنا اكو فات وعندنا فات فري ماس او يسموها لين بادي ماس الفات لوس از نوت ديترمنتال بس البروتين ماس از فيري امبورتنت and it is detrimental to the body and increase the morbidity and mortality in critically ill patients admitted to the intensive care unit with severe sepsis or major blunt trauma undergo Massive changes in body composition. The slide that go, which is on the body composition, will be a change in the patient who has them severe sepsis or major blunt trauma. What will happen first? It will be the body weight increases immediately on resuscitation. It will increase the body weight. The septic shock. With major blunt trauma, which is that with an expansion of extracellular water, yeah, he is that the extracellular space water, approximately six to ten liter within twenty-four hours. Okay, so the increase in weight will be under the septic shock in the beginning. Thereafter, after that, even with optimal metabolic care, حتى لو كان عندك أكثر ما يمكن كتب إن أحسن intensive care أو حتى لو كان عندك nutritional support the total body protein will diminish by 15% in the next 10 days يعني شافوا إنه اللي حتى لو عندك أفضل عناية أفضل nutrition body protein will diminish by 15% خلال عشرة أيام and body weight will reach negative balance as the expansion of the extracellular space result. In the sweat management, for the extracellular space, اللي صار عندك زيادة بي راح يتعدل resolve. فراح يبين عندك نقص الوزن. فبالبداية راح يصير عندك زيادة بالوزن نتيجة زيادة extracellular fluid volume. اللي هو wrong impression يعطيك كلام تبع إنه هذا المريض زاد وزن يعني كل شيء ما بي بينما هو زيادة بالextracellular fluid water. وعنده بنفس الوقت المريض عنده نيجاتيف نيتروجين بالانس يعني بده يحرق بنفسه فهذه تبين ورا شنو ورا فد 10 الى 15 20 يوم يبدي المريض ينزل الوزن مالته يصير نيجاتيف بالانس بهذا السلايد هو اللي نتكلم عنه قبل شويه بنلاحظ السته الويت جين هذا اللي فوق هنا الويت لوس هنا اللي جوا وهذا هي الدايز اللي اللي ايام بدها تمشي يوم ورا يوم اذا كان ستارفيشن لاحظ البادي ويت بده ينزل الى حد يوصل يفقد 16 كيلو 18 الى ان شوي شوي ينزل يصير بالانكمبليكيتد ميجر سيرجري لا اللوس يصير عنده لوس بس مو مثل الستارفيشن لان يعني هو مو ميجر سيرجري مو مو يعني نت كمبليكيتد ميجر سيرجري بينما بالسبسز ان مالتي اورجان فيلر بلانت تروما ميجر بلانت تروما راح اشوف عند البادي ويت راح يزداد زين اول خ... اول يوم يومين ثلاثه بعدين يبدي ينزل ينزل ليش لان انت سويت له كوركشن للاكسترا للمانجمنت بيكوز اوف ذا مانجمنت تعدلت الاكسترا سولر فلويد فوليوم فراح يرجع طبيعي بس بنفس الوقت ليش دا ينزل لان عندك نيجاتيف نيجاتيف نيتروجين بالانس دا يحرق بالبروتين فيقوم ينزل شوي شوي الى ان يبدي ينزل وزنه ويبدي يصير مثل الستارفيشن شوي شوي يصير So in summary for the body composition following major surgery what are the changes catabolism lead to a decrease in the fat mass and skeletal muscle mass but the detrimental effect is the for the muscle mass the body weight may paradoxically increase because of the expansion of the extracellular fluid space this is occur where in 
patient with with the severely injured uh, has septic shock or multi organ failure so there is a paradoxical increase of the body weight because of the expansion of the extracellular fluid space but at the same time he has a negative nitrogen balance Uh, now we will talk about the first uh, uh, now we will talk about the first uh, factor uh, which is avoidable uh, is the continuous hemorrhage or we can call it volume loss uh, during simple hemorrhage blood loss the pressure receptors in the carotid artery aortic arch the volume receptors in the wall of the left atrium then two types of receptors uh, will initiate afferent nerve input so tercel the blood volume موجود بال circulation then the receptor تتحسس but initiate afferent nerve input to the central nervous system راح تنقل as the one the central nervous system resulting هذا لما يصير as the central nervous system resulting in the both increase secretions of both aldosterone and empty diuretic hormone اللي هو ADH the pain اللي هو بسبب injury also cause uh, stimulation of ADH release the ADH على شنو راح يشتغل act directly on the kidney to cause the fluid retention so we water resorption the decreased pulse pressure and shown you call pulse pressure I mean you call the blood volume what has part of the blood they call the blood volume for a hickle and stroke volume in a color stroke volume a hickle and pulse pressure how they should then then tell them something applied physiology they the magna physiology we don't know of physiology we cannot understand any things in the metabolic response so we have to know the if there is blood volume uh, decreased rahi shown reflected on what al stroke volume the amount of the blood reject, rejected by the heart uh, by each beat rahi qil fa ahna nafa an tariq al pulse pressure rahi qil pulse pressure what difference between systolic and diastolic fa da qil al pulse pressure sha hi sawi lna stimulate the juxta glomerular apparatus li hi mawjuda bil kidney اللي راح تشتغل على directly activate the renin angiotensin system which in turn increase the aldosterone release راح تزيد the aldosterone release aldosterone cause شرح يسون فائدة the aldosterone cause the renal tubule to reabsorb sodium وإذا سوى reabsorption of sodium راح ينسحب ويا الواتر فحافظ على شنو على the blood volume so the ADS يحافظ على الواتر will aldosterone half of the sodium for the natrium sodium water preservation the ACTH release also augment the aldosterone responses the whole aldosterone is less than the stress because of the trauma because of the metabolic response to injury the ACTH like we talked about in the beginning of the video is less than the stress so it will help the aldosterone response the net effect of ADH of aldosterone will help when you have a lot of sodium والووتر حيث عندك أوليجوريا زين The tendency towards water and salt retention is exacerbated by our work by risk by the resuscitation يعني إحنا هو عند صوديوم water retention وإحنا نيجي نعوض المريض بنورمال سلاين فصار عندك نورمال سلاين هو صوديوم وكلورايد بي صوديوم وبي ووتر ف هو اصلا صوديوم موتر ريتنشن فراح يزيد الصوديوم موتر ريتنشن فذلك هنا وصلنا للنقطه المهمه اللي نوصلها اللي هي الافويدبل فاكتور اللي هي الكيرفول ليميتيشن اوف ذا انترا اوبراتيف ادمنستريشنز اوف كولويد اند كريستالويد سو ذات 
there is no net weight gain following elective surgery. شلقوا بها إنه هذا disprove to reduce the post-operative complication and length of the stay. So, the volume loss, the avoidable factor, well, careful limitation of the intraoperative administration of colloid and the crystalloid. Hypothermia, it is the second uh, avoidable factor. Hypothermia results in increased elaborations of adrenal steroids and catecholamines, zayed frauds, adrenal steroid and catecholamines. When compared with normothermic controls, either one patient hypothermia with any normothermic, then even Mild hypothermia result in two to three fold increase in the postoperative cardiac arrhythmia and increased catabolism. So, show the hypothermia, they the risk of cardiac arrhythmia and increased catabolism. Now, the randomized trials have been shown that maintaining normothermia by the upper body forced air heating and so on heating the body. Uh, cover and uh, heating cover reduces wound infection واحد cardiac complication اثنين bleeding ثلاثة and transfusion requirement أربعة. The second uh, important things اللي هو hypothermia should be uh, reduced. Tissue edema. It is uh, also one of the avoidable factors should be avoided and introduce the um, metabolic response to injury uh, during systemic inflammation a fluid will plasma protein will leukocytes macrophage electrolytes uh, leaves the vascular space and accumulate in the tissue uh, because why it accumulated because in this dilatation and increase in the vascular permeability because of the systemic inflammation so this will accumulate in the extracellular space extracellular space بين الخلية وبين البسل فهي تكون مثل البرير this can diminish the alveolar diffusion of the oxygen and may lead to reduced renal function the tissue edema one of the avoidable factors the systemic inflammation and tissue under perfusion uh, the vascular endothelium controls the vasomotor tone and microvascular flow and regulates the trafficking of nutrients and biologically active molecules so the endothelium is very important because it control all of these when endothelial activation is excessive compromised micro circulations and subsequent cellular hypoxia and this contribute to the organ failure maintaining normal glycemic patients with insulin infusion during critical illness has been proposed to protect the endothelium properly in part via the inhibition of uh, uh, nitric oxide this release nitric oxide release and thereby contribute to the prevention of organ failure and death administrations are second things of activated protein c to critically ill patient also shown to reduce organ failure and death and is thought to act in part via preservation of the microcirculation in the vital organs so the nitric oxide release which is the inhibition of nitric oxide which is the nitric oxide which is the vasodilation if we reduce the inhibition of nitric oxide release on the glycemic control Second things, protein C, activated protein C, will critical in patient have to reduce organ failure and death. Starvation, 
it is one of the avoidable factor should be practiced and they found that avoiding unnecessary fasting in the first instance in the first instance I mean uh, from the start and early oral enteral parenteral nutrition form the platform for avoiding loss of the body mass we talked about if uh, there is no nutrition if there is starvation there will be uh, uh, metabolic consequences so if we uh, avoid the fasting in the uh, prior to surgery for a long time and we start as early as possible uh, oral enteral or parenteral nutrition this depends on the types of surgery uh, this will uh, avoid loss of body mass now modern guidelines on fasting prior to surgery prior to anesthesia allow intake of clear fluids up to two hours before surgery بينما قبل كان يقول لك تجي fasting 8 ساعات هسه المودرن guidelines ياخذ clear fluid two hours before surgery and also the guideline said that the administration of carbohydrate drink at this time reduce the perioperative anxiety قليل anxiety قبل العملية and thirst والعطش and decrease post-operative insulin resistance immobility is a potent stimulus for inducing muscle wasting and uh, inactivity means immobility impairs the normal meal derived amino acid stimulations of a protein synthesis in the skeletal muscle so if there is no activity there is no stimulation or protein synthesis avoiding of unnecessary bed rest and active early mobilization are essential measures to avoid muscle wasting because of the immobility In this slide, we can see the factors that exacerbate the metabolic response to surgical injury, which include hypothermia, controlled pain, starvation, immobilization, sepsis, and medical complications. Uh, we can see the patient in trauma patient, trauma, traumatized patients or super major surgery patients. There is a wound hypothermia, hypotension, pain, which all of them stimulate the adrenosympathetic activations and cytokine cascades release into leukine 1 and 6 both of them will end with the hypermetabolic state, acute phase protein, insulin resistance Futile substrate in cycling, the substrate it will glycogen in glucose, gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, and muscle protein degradation. All of these lead to catabolism. Very important things which increase catabolism, you can see the starvation and immobilization. What are the concepts behind optimal perioperative care? This is one of the learning objectives of this lecture. There is a strong scientific rationale for avoiding exposure to stress, prolonged fasting, and excessive administration of intravenous saline. The widespread of 
adoption of minimal access surgery اللي هو اللابراسكوب is the key change in the surgical practice that can reduce the magnitude of surgical injury and enhance the rate of patient return to homeostasis to normal physiological state and recovery so the الثورة العالمية هسه انه بالطب انه اللابراسكوب minimal invasive surgery which do انه تقلل الميتابوليك ريسبونس تو انجري it is important also to realize to realize that modulating the stress and inflammatory responses at the time of surgery may have long term sequelae over a period of months and long and or longer for example beta blockers and statin have recently been shown to improve long term survival after major surgery equally the use of epidural analgesia to reduce pain block the cortisol stress response and attenuate post operative insulin resistance الفكرة هنا عن pain هو the main cause or the main stimuli of the nervous system اللي راح تحفز الشنو نيو اندوكراين اللي يؤدي الى الميتابوليك ريسبونس فاحنا اذا اوقفنا البين ماكو بين عند باي بيديور انالجيسيا راح يقلل البين راح بلوك ذا كورتيزول ستريس ريسبونس In summary, uh, a proactive approach to prevent a necessary aspect of the surgical stress response اللي هي حتى نقلل ال surgical stress response شنو هن هذني الأشياء minimal access techniques اللي هي laparoscopy blockage of uh, afferent painful stimuli يعني epidural analgesia minimal period of starvation كلما قل فترة ال uh, فترة ال fasting قبل العملية وكلما uh, بدينا early early um, nutrition كلما قل ال surgical stress response و early mobilization بهذا الفيجر بدنا نشوف بكل العالم قاموا يطبقون هسه enhance recovery after surgery enhance recovery program الفكرة من عنده هاي هنا traditional care القديم اللي كان يستخدموه اللي هو fasting 8 ساعات mobilization ورا يومين ثلاثة ال pain control ماكو epidural ماكو minimal invasive surgery اللي تكلمنا عليه قبل شوية بدك تشوف ان ال functional capacity اللي هو ال vertical راح ينزل decline and return to normal after weeks while and if they apply the multimodal enhanced recovery uh, program لاحظ راح يصير الفانكشنال كاباسيتي للمريض راح تنزل شويه وراح ترجع نورمال within days so كل العالم هسه يطبق الانهانس ريكفري بروجرام وطبقوها هسه مثلا بالكولون اوكي فوجدوا انه الريكفري مال البيشنت يكون افضل واسرع واقل موربيديتي ومورتاليتي طبعا الانهانس ريكفري بروجرام دي طبقوه مثل ما قلنا بالسي اي كولون بس فور ناو ات از ابلايد ان موست Uh, surgeries uh, in the world wide uh, احنا بالعراق نحاول نطبقها ان شاء الله uh, بس التطبيق مالته مو uh, مثل ما ماشي بالعالم نحاول نوصل للعالمية uh, بهاي السلايد نكون غطينا الميتابوليك ريسبونس تو انجري اتمنى توفقت بايصال المادة العلمية المتابعة الرسبونس انجيم مثل ما قلت انه هي مادة شوية جافة صعبة بس ان شاء الله توفقت بالتوضيحة اذا عندكم اي سؤال اني حاضر وشكرا جزيلا على استماعكم وان شاء الله نلتقي عن قريب ان شاء الله